Hi, welcome to this Code Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at integration. Integration is the reverse process to differentiation. So make sure you're confident with your differentiation. Make sure you've watched the Code Maths videos and done the questions on that. But if we had y equals x to the power of n, to differentiate, to find dy by dx, or the gradient function, we would bring down the power and we would reduce the power by 1. So for instance, if we had y equals x to the power of 8, to find dy by dx, or the gradient function, we would bring down our 8, so it would be 8x, then we would reduce the power by 1, so 8 take away 1 is equal to 7. So if we had y equals x to the power of 8, dy by dx would be equal to 8x to the power of 7. That process is called differentiation. Now if we want to go backwards and we want to find out what y is, then that process is called integration or integrating. So to go backwards, what we do is we add 1 to the power and we divide by the new power. So for instance, if we had 8x to the power of 7, we would add 1 to the power, so that would be x to the power of 8. Then we would divide this 8 by the new power, so 8 divided by 8 is 1. So the answer would be x to the power of 8. Now, we just need to be careful here, because if we had something else, such as y equals x to the power of 8 plus 10, and we differentiated that, dy by dx, what would that give us? Well, bringing down the power, now we're differentiating here to find our dy by dx, we're going to differentiate, so bringing down the power would be 8x, and then reducing the power by 1 would be equal to 7. Now, differentiating numbers give you zero. So, for instance, if we differentiate 10, that's equal to zero. The reason is, if we had a curve and we added 10, it would shift the curve up 10 squares. Now, that doesn't affect the gradient of the curve, so the grid, that constant, that adding 10, has no effect on the gradient. So, whenever you differentiate numbers, you get zero. And the Corbin-Miles videos on differentiation will make sure that you know that. Now that's a bit of a problem because actually we've got the same dy by dx but we've got different y's that we started with. So we need to do something to acknowledge the fact that there could be a number on the end. And let's have a look at that now. So if we've been given dy by dx, so here we've got our gradient function as x to the power of n. If we wanted to integrate, we would add 1 to the power and we would divide by the new power. So we've added 1 to the power to get n plus 1. There was a 1 in front of our x to the power of n, so we've done 1 divided by the new power. But also we've got this plus c, and this plus c is called the constant of integration. And the reason we put that plus c on the end is we don't actually know if there were any numbers on the end, because whenever we've differentiated, they would give us 0. Now sometimes we're given enough information to work out what the plus c would be, um, but in this video, we're going to focus on indefinite integration, and that's where we have our plus C on the end, where we're not actually sure if there was a number there or not. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. So our first question. Our first question we've been given is dy by dx is equal to x to the power of 4. So we've got x to the power of 4, and we need to integrate it to find y. We want to go backwards and find what y was. So to integrate, we're going to add 1 to the power, so that'll be x to the power of 5. And then we're going to divide by the new power. Now in front of this was a 1, because 1x to the power of 4. 1 divided by 5 would be a fifth, so that would be a fifth x to the power of 5. But there could have been a number here, whenever we differentiated, there could have been a number, so we're going to write them plus c. And that's it. So the answer would be y equals a fifth x to the power of 5 plus c. And that's it. So we have gone from our dy by dx back up to what our y would be by integrating. Okay, let's have a look at another example. If we were given dy by dx, the gradient function, and we wanted to find y, what we'd do is we'd write y equals, we would add 1 to the power, so that would be x cubed, because 2 plus 1 is 3, and then we would divide by the new power. Now there's a 15 there, we're going to divide that by 3, so that's 5. So the answer would be y equals 5x cubed plus c. Make sure you always put that plus c on the end whenever you're integrating. Okay, next. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got dy by dx equals a number 8, and we've been asked to find y. So whenever we integrate, we're going to increase the power of x by 1. So that's going to give us, well, we've got y equals. Now here we've got no x's, or it'll be, I suppose it'll be x to the power of 0, because x to the power of 0 is 1. And when we increase the power of the x by 1, we're going to get x. So that'll be 8x. Then we're going to divide by the new power. Well, 8 divided by 1 is just 8. And then we've got our plus c. So so whenever you've got a number and you integrate, you're just going to put your letter beside it. So for instance, if it was 8, it would be 8x plus c. If it was 10 and you integrate it, it would be 10x plus c, and so on. And if you watch the videos in differentiation, you would be happy that whenever you had something like 20x and you differentiated it, you would get 20. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Our next question, we've been given that dy by dx equals 3x squared. 
So to find y, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate. So let's increase the power of x by 1. So that'll be x cubed by increasing the power of x by 1. And then we're going to divide by the new power. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now I'm not going to write 1x cubed. I'm just going to write x cubed. So y equals x cubed. But always remember to put our plus c, our constant of integration. Okay, our next question. Okay, this time we've got dy by dx equals minus 4x. Find y. So y equals increase the power of x by 1. So here we've got x to the power of 1. We're going to increase the power of x by 1, so that'll be x squared. And then divide by the new power, we've got minus 4. We're going to divide it by 2, that's going to be minus 2. So be minus 2x squared plus c. Okay, next question. Okay, our next question is dy by dx equals 12x to the power of negative 3. So if we want to integrate to find y, we're going to increase the power of x by 1. So the power at the minute is minus 3, when, or negative 3. When you increase it by 1, that'll be bring you back up. So that'll be negative 2 or minus 2. So let's put that down, negative 2. And we're going to take our number 12 and we're going to divide it by the new power. 12 divided by negative 2 would be negative 6. So it'll be negative 6x to the negative 2 plus c. Okay, our next question. Our next question, we've got dy by dx equals 6x to the power of a half. So y equals increasing the power of x by 1. So at the minute, it's a half. So it's going to be 1 and a half. So you could write 1 and a half or 1.5. Or even we could write it as 3 halves like so. So x to the power of 3 halves because 1 and a half is 3 halves. I would probably write it like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide by our new power. So we've got 6 and we're going to divide it by 3 halves, which is 1.5. So 6 divided by 1.5 is equal to 4. Or I suppose oh, we could have done 6 divided by 3 halves, and that'll be 6 multiplied by 2 thirds. Put our 6 to 6 is over 1. 6 times 2 is equal to 12, and 1 times 3 is equal to 3, and 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So if you do have some tricky fractions there, you can just divide by using your division by fractions. So 6 divided by 3 halves would be equal to 4. So it would be y equals 4x to the power of 3 halves plus c. Okay, our next question. Our next question, we've got dy by dx equals 24x to the power of negative a half. So we're going to find our y by increasing the power of x by 1. So at the minute, it's minus a half or minus 0.5. When you add 1 to that, you would get 0.5 or a half. So that would be x to the power of a half. Then we've got 24, and we need to divide that by the new power. So we're going to do 24 divided by a half. Now, 24 divided by a half would be equal to 48 because it's 48 halves in 24. Just remember, it's not going to be 12 because we're not dividing by 2. We're dividing by a half. So that would be 48x to the power of a half plus c. Always make sure we put that plus c on the end. Okay, let's have a look at some questions now where we've got lots of different terms. So this time, we've got dy by dx equals 3x squared plus x minus 1. So to integrate this, we're going to just integrate each term separately. So we're going to find our y by getting, starting off with our 3x squared, increase the power of x by 1, so it's going to be x cubed, and divide by our new power, so we've got 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1, so that would be y equals x cubed, so that's that part done. Now we've got our x, we're going to increase the power of x by 1, so that would be equal to x squared. We're then going to divide by our new power, this was 1x, if you divide that by 2 that's a half, so that's a half x squared. And then we've got minus 1, when you integrate a number, remember it's just going to be minus 1x, or just minus x x because whenever you integrate minus 1 it'll be minus 1x or minus x and then we've got our plus c and that's it. So if we had dy by dx and that was equal to 3x squared plus x minus 1 our y would be equal to x cubed plus a half x squared minus x plus c and we can check it by differentiating so we could bring the 3 down that would be 3x and then reduce the power by 1 so that would be squared then if we had a half x squared we could bring the power down a half times 2 is equal to 1 reduce the power by 1, that's equal to 1, so that would just be x. If we had minus x, that would be minus 1x. If we differentiated, that would be minus 1. And the number, when we differentiated, that would give us 0. So we know we're right. Okay, our next question. If we've got dy by dx is equal to 9x squared plus 6x to the negative 3, if we wanted to find y, we increase the power by 1, so that would be x cubed, and then we divide by the new power. So we've got 9 divided by 3, and that's equal to 3. So integrating 9x squared would give us 3x cubed. Now the next term we need to integrate is 6x to the power of negative 3. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our x and we're going to increase the power by 1. So that'll be x to the power of negative 2. 
because whenever you increase by one, you're going closer to zero. Then we need to divide by our new power. So we're going to take our six and we're going to divide it by negative two. Six divided by negative two would be negative three. So instead of writing plus negative three here, I'm just going to write minus three x to the power of negative two. And then also remember our plus c. So y would be equal to 3x cubed minus 3x to the power of negative 3 plus c. And again, we can check it. Bringing the 3 down would be 9x squared if we differentiated that. Then with this term, bringing it down would be negative 3 times negative 2 would be plus 6, and then x, and then reducing that by 1 would be negative 3, and differentiating c would give us 0. Okay, next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next example. So our next example is a little bit different. We've got some different notation. Now, so far with this video, I've been using y as what we're starting off with, the equation of our curve or whatever we're starting with. And then we're finding our dy by dx by differentiating. Now, oh, another way of writing that is instead of writing y equals, we could write f of x equals, so function of x equals, and then we could differentiate it. And whenever we differentiate, we do f dash of x like so. And that just means you've differentiated. So rather than using dy by dx, we could use f dash of x like so. And also, if we differentiate it again, and there's other videos on that in Corbett Maths, whenever you find the second derivative, whenever you differentiate again, you get d2y over dx squared. If we differentiated this again, we would just get f dash dash of x, like so. And I actually like that, the fact that it's just a bit simpler, that you're just doing f dash dash, so you differentiate it twice. Okay, so let's rub that out and use this notation. So here we've got f dash of x, and we need to find f of x. So that just means we need to integrate to find f of x. So f of x equals. So increasing the power by 1 would be x to the power of 5, but we need to divide by the new power. We've got a 1 here. 1 divided by 5 is a fifth, so we've got a fifth x to the power of 5 plus. Then we've got 6x, so increase the power by 1 would be x squared, and then dividing by the new power, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then we've got 7. Whenever we integrate 7, we would get 7x, just put in an x beside it. And then we've got our plus c, which is our constant of integration. And always remember to put that on the end. And that's it. And that's just a different type of notation. Okay, let's have a look now at what we call the integral sign. So this is the integration sign, and it's an elongated s, like so. So we have a look at this notation. If I was to read this, this would read integrate. This is the integral symbol, integrate. Then what comes after it is what you're integrating. If it's just 6x, it would say 6x. Sometimes it's inside of a bracket, and it's saying integrate what's inside the bracket. And then you've got these letters on the end. It'll always have a D, and then it'll have another letter. And that's what you're integrating with respect to. In this question, we're dealing with x's, and we're integrating it with respect to x. You'll see later on in, the, in this video that in some situations, we're not integrating with respect to x, so it'll say dt or something like that. Okay, let's have a look at questions using this integration notation. So our first question says, find the integral to integrate 2x plus 1 with respect to x. So if I want to integrate 2x plus 1 with respect to x, I'm just going to integrate this. So that would be equal to, so we're going to do each term separately. So let's start off with our 2x. So increase the power of x by 1. So at the minute it's a 1, we increase it by 1 would be x squared. We're then going to divide by the new power of x. So it's squared. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So it's just going to be x squared. Then we've got our plus 1. Now we're going to integrate that. So whenever we integrate 1, it'd be 1x. So we would just write plus x. And then also remember to put our plus c. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next example. This time we've been asked to integrate 4x cubed minus 9x squared with respect to x. So again, we're going to start off with our first term. Let's increase the power of x by 1. So it'll be x to the power of 4. And then we're going to divide by the new power. So 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. So it'll be x to the power of 4. Then we've got minus. Then we've got 9x squared. So we're going to integrate this by increasing the power of x by 1. So it'll be x cubed. And then we're going to take our 9 and we're going to divide it by the new power. 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. And then we've got our plus c. So we've integrated that with respect to x. So this notation, although it can look a bit confusing, it's just saying integrate this with respect to this letter. Integrate this, and so on. OK, let's have a look at our next question. OK, next one says integrate 2x to the power of negative 5 plus x. So again, we're going to look at our first term, 2x to the power of negative 5. We're going to increase the power by 1, so that's going to be x to the power of negative 4. Then we're going to divide by the new power. So we've got 2, and we're going to divide it by negative 4. Now, 2 divided by negative 4, well, 2 divided by 4 is a half, so 2 divided by negative 4 would be minus a half. So I'm just going to write minus a half or negative a half there. So we've got minus a half x to the power of negative 4. Now we're going to integrate x, so we're going to increase the power of x by 1, so it'll be x squared, and divide by the new power. We've got a 1 there. Divided by 2 would be a half x squared, and then plus c, and that's it. 
Okay, next question. Okay, this time I've changed the letters. So instead of having x's, we've got integrate 18t to the power of 5 minus t with respect to t. So it just means we're going to do this question, but we're going to integrate t instead of x. So let's look at our first term. We've got 18t to the power of 5. Well, let's increase the power of t by 1, so that'll be t to the power of 6. And then divide by our new power, 18 divided by 6 is 3. So we've got 3t to the power of 6. And then looking at our t, increasing the power of t by 1 will be t squared. And dividing by a new power, we had a 1t. Dividing by 2, 1 divided by 2 is a half. And then plus c. And that's it. So we have integrated 18t to the power of 5 minus t with respect to t. And that's it. Okay, and let's have a look at our last example. So our last example is to integrate 4x squared plus 5x to the power of 3 halves minus 8 with respect to x. So let's start off with our first term. We've got 4x squared. So increasing the power of x by 1 will give us x cubed. And then we're going to divide by our new power. 4 divided by 3 would be 4 thirds. Next, we've then got plus. We've got 5x to the power of 3 halves. So we're going to increase the power by 1. So we had 3 halves. We want to add 1. So that'll be the same as 3 halves plus 2 halves, which would be equal to 5 halves. So this is going to be x to the power of 5 halves. Now we need to divide by our new power. So we're going to do 5 divided by 5 halves. Now, one thing to notice is 5 halves. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. And we're seeing how many 2.5s go into 5. So the answer just there would be 2. But if it didn't go in as nicely as that and you needed to divide it, we would do 5 divided by 5 halves. 5 is equal to 5 over 1. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 fifths. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And 1 times 5 is equal to 5. And 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So that's how you would get the number in front. You would just do the division. Then we've got minus 8. If we integrate that, that would be minus 8x. Just putting an x beside it and then plus c, and that's it. So this video has been on integration. We have looked at how to integrate by increasing the power of x by one and dividing by the new power. We've looked at why it's important to add the, the constant of integration, the plus c. Integration, remember, it's the opposite, it's the reverse process of differentiation. So it's gonna be very useful that if we know what the gradient function is, finding what y would be, the equation of the curve, and also can be useful to find what they call the area under the curve and things like that, and we'll, we'll look at that in another video, okay? But I hope you find this video useful, and thanks very much. Cheers, bye.